Not everything in Blender needs to be boring and extremely difficult. Sometimes I just like to sit down, open Blender, and play with some processes and tricks where I just simply like the effect that they yield. And a lot of times, the process of making these things is really interesting and fun. So today, I'm gonna show you a ton of those processes that I do quite a lot to make really interesting things and have some fun along the way. Every single thing that I mentioned in this video, there's gonna be a playlist below where you can learn and do each one of these things I'm mentioning. So with that being said, Let's get into it. Getting particles to take a shape might seem like it could be really complicated, but in geometry nodes, just simply converting any object to a volume allows you to then place as many particles you want within that shape. There's simple ways to prevent the objects from touching, and you can literally use any object that you want. You can randomize the rotation, the scale, the color, anything that you want. And one of my favorite things to do is filling up text with other objects. Proximity is a really easy way to make your animations look really interesting. It kind of automates your ability to make the objects interact with each other and make them feel a little bit more alive. With just a couple nodes, you can get objects to interact with anything you want them to change. When an object gets closer to other objects, you can make them scale in and out. You can edit the rotation of them, transparency, and really any animatable component. And the really cool thing about this is the more you learn about Blender, the more you can go back to this proximity system and make it affect those things. It's pretty endless and it's a really versatile way to animate things. There are two ways to build text in Blender. There's sort of the OG, very reliable text editor. But once you learn how to use the one in geometry nodes, it opens you up to so many ways to make really interesting text. At its very core, building text in geometry nodes allows you to treat the text just like regular geometry and then start building it out from there. You can turn it into things like wireframes, instancing things on those faces and the points, being able to separate different components and apply materials to them, and just simply turning the geometry into interesting structures. Geometry nodes simply allows you access to so many different components of the geometry to make interesting things, and that's the best part of it. This one might feel very random and specific, but when I made this original project, I found it to be incredibly fun to do. Light is something that humans really connect to. It feels kind of magical sometimes. So being able to artfully play with light within Blender can be really, really rewarding. I'll link a Pinterest board below where I get a lot of my ideas when I'm playing around with this. In my video about light sculptures, I'll show you how to create light bulbs. And if you use just a very basic knowledge of geometry nodes, you can create different geometric ways of displaying these lights and animating them and playing with them. This is a really cool process and I'm seriously considering making sort of a part two to this because I've learned a lot more and there's so many cool things you can do with this. The easiest way to make like audio visualizers in Blender is baking the music to keyframes. Once you have those keyframes, anything that can be keyframed can now react to music. So if you take that idea, almost anything can be a audio visualizer. In this video, I showed a bunch of ways you can take those keyframes and animate interesting things. You can even take the waveform video and have it control geometry and geometry nodes. And I showed you how to set that up. It's a really powerful trick and there's a lot of really easy ways to make interesting audio visualizers in Blender. Let's go back to particles and talk about using noise to animate particles. Just simply creating points, getting a set position and plugging a noise texture into that set position you automatically have an ability to move those points around and make an interesting point cloud animation. If you just wanna stare at your computer screen and play around with animation and play around with how many objects, their scales, light, this is a really, really fun thing to play around with. You could go with the basic route of getting a noise texture, plugging that into a set position and playing with the strength of that noise. But with the addition of a repeat zone, you can make almost this very water-like shape to where the particles move around. And with a few more nodes, you can make some incredible animations. I talked about all of that in a recent video. Again, all those are linked in the description and you can check it out and learn how to animate particles with noise. It's really powerful and it's incredibly fun and satisfying to do. This is another one that feels probably very random and specific, but using area lights to create projectors in Blender. A while ago, I showed a project where I was using an area light with different shapes and textures, projecting them on to things and environments, and it made them feel really expressive and artistic. If you love more abstract art, having some fun with that, maybe making some portraits in Blender, or even simply creating an environment and casting something down on the ground, that makes it look really sci-fi and interesting, and it's really easy to set up, and it's a really easy way to add some interesting style to what you are working on. I've been making a lot of animations with curves this year. I think legitimately it is 
my favorite thing to do in Blender. There's so many things you can do with it. I have several different videos where I'm showing how to animate strings, how to get your curves to look more interesting with the use of attributes and your shading, how to use noise to animate it, or things like how to use textures to shape them to look a little bit more sci-fi or computer-esque. I think it's one of the most versatile ways to make interesting animations pretty easily. And in several videos recently, I showed how to create topographic maps with curves and animate them and make them look really, really cool. Logos can be brought into Blender in several different ways. One really interesting way is to bring them in as an image so that that image can control geometry. I did that a few times in this tutorial here. You can also edit the logo in the shading to create really effects combining the logo with other textures and noises and images. You can also convert the logo itself into a volume and fill that logo with any object that you want. There are so many ways to use 3D to make interesting animations and images with logos, and I think it can really enhance your freelance work if that's something that you do. My most recent project yielded four tutorials and all of them were inspired by topographic maps. I think it's a really versatile way to go, hey, I want to create animations that feel inspired by topographic maps. There's so many things you can do. Those set of four videos are going to show you some expressive and interesting ways to make topographic map inspired animations and you can probably make hundreds of them and now and all of them not be exactly the same. There's a lot of different ways you can make variations to this and make some cool animations. With that being said, hopefully some of those things can help you get back into the seat, make some things, make some animations that just feel fun, that you can feel proud of. Sometimes just making something for yourself is really important. And these are some really good ways to learn some cool stuff and make your own animations. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.